Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be figuring a bunch of stuff out on the Charger station wagon front and rear subframe. So we're gonna start off on the rear subframe first, but as you guys remember, you may not remember because it has been a while since I've messed with this thing. I have been constantly thinking of how to improve this, but we had some fitment, fitment issues. And the fitment issues were, it didn't clear the fuel tank or the fuel tank wouldn't fit in there when the subframe was in there, vice versa and the sway bar wasn't gonna work. The sway bar was interfering with a spare tire well on the Magnum. So the Magnum and the Charger use that same rear you know, sheet metal setup. So if I could get it to fit in a Magnum, it will fit in a Charger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the sway bar in. Hopefully that resolves that issue. And then on this mount right here on both sides is what was hitting the fuel tank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this mount back. And when I do that, it's pretty much gonna have to be fully redesigned. Let's get the stuff. I need to get the subframe out of the parts magnum. So this was the magnum that was wrecked in the front that I chopped the roof off of for the Charger station wagon. And it's just been, I've been utilizing it. So I have it sitting on the side right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the exhaust and the subframe and the drive shaft out of it, as well as the fuel tank, then flip it all the way over. And then I could get the other subframe in here, make sure it's gonna clear this wheel well, make sure it's gonna clear the Hellcat fuel tank so we don't have any more issues. This is just what I should have done in the beginning, but I didn't think about it. So this will make it a lot easier to make sure fitment is gonna be correct. So let's get all this stuff out of here and then get the, you know, get it back on the top of the roof and then we could get the new subframe in there, make sure the sway bar is gonna fit, make sure the fuel tank is gonna fit and uh, finally get this rear subframe hammered out. I now have the Magnum flipped over and installed the tubular subframe with the solid subframe bushing. So I have three bolts in these, it's centered. You can see down in this hole that it's nice and centered with that hole as well. So now I'm very happy that the sway bar, if I lift it up here, it's gonna have plenty of clearance. So I could push this out about a quarter inch would be perfect, but before it was like that far out and it was just touching, interfering with this spare tire wheel well wasn't gonna work. So I think what I'm gonna do, even though I can push it out that far, I think I'm probably gonna just have it flush with this piece of metal here and then make a bracket come out here on the bottom just so I'm not having to worry about inter interference issues. Then up here, you can see the fuel tank goes here. I removed that one out of, out of this car, the Magnum, so I could put the Charger one in. They're the same fuel tank, but I just wanna have the Charger one in. You can see how much this protrudes. Here, the fuel tank comes back here. Let's test fit the fuel tank first before I cut this off. 
and uh, and then see how much further back it needs to go. Just finished test fitting the fuel tank and I have realized something. I'm not gonna have to modify the rear subframe as much as I thought I was gonna have to modify it. So, like I said, we're gonna have them, that rear sway bar bolted exactly how I said. And that's all the modification that I'm gonna do this. Other than that, she's ready to be welded up. So I'll send it out to a friend, have them welded up, and that will be 100% done. I'd weld it up myself, but I don't have a TIG welder anymore. So I've been looking for a TIG, still don't have a TIG. We'll have somebody I know that really does a good job finish welding it up, and then I could powder coat it and not have to worry about this rear subframe fabrication anymore. I already have the solid subframe bushings made. I have all the adjustable arms. I could utilize the Trackhawk factory lower control arm, the knuckles, everything is good to go. Later on, I'm going to make a adjustable lower control arm, but for now, the subframe, the rear subframe is good to go. The bad thing about this thing being good to go is the fuel tank isn't gonna work. So I can't modify the fuel tank. The reason I can't modify it is the EVAP canister is on the end, that big bulky kind of round thing, which I can't push it in. I need to go in about two inches. So the center hole right here, I have a line going through it. That line is off of this edge. So I can't push that in because all the EVAP stuff's in and it needs to go in probably three inches so there's clearance and I don't have to worry about rubbing. The solution to this problem is a little bit more um, involved. Let's say that, you know, I can't use this. I can't use it at all. I have to make a fabricated sheet metal aluminum fuel tank, which I didn't want to do, but it'll be nice because I think I can make it a little bit larger and I can make it so this heat shield still bolts to it. This one on this fuel tank was a little bit messed up. I have another one that's good, but you can't remove those clips, unfortunately. So you can't put another heat shield on. So I'll have a little bit more capacity. It'll be slimmer. It won't have any interference issues with the subframe and it'll be exactly how I want it. The bad thing is I have to make it. So right now I want to get this subframe done. This subframe has been being built for a while. You guys know it's been being built for a while, but it has, it looks great. I mean, it is a tubular trick subframe, but it needs to get done. So we'll get this sway bar mounted, get it welded, and then get it powder coated so I can bolt it in the car, bolt all the adjustable arms on it. I could utilize the Trackhawk lower control arm I could use the true coilovers that I've made. Everything will be good. We could put it all on the charger and then I could bolt most of the exhaust on the back as well of the charger because I got that Magnaflow, that really nice Magnaflow V-band carbon fiber exhaust for the charger and she'll look really good. But now let's pull this fuel tank out. I'm pretty much done with this for right now. And then let's modify this so we can get it welded up and uh, not have to worry about the subframe, rear subframe situation anymore and start worrying more about the sub front subframe and getting this bolted in the car and making the Magnum, or yeah, it's a Magnum, making the Charger Magnum look nice and low again. the rear sway bar mounted onto the subframe 
and she looks good. But we have some really close tolerances right here. On this side, it's like almost perfect. Well, this side's perfect too because it's not touching, but this is all the way back. So Dodge makes it so the subframes move, so they're slotted. But when it's all the way back, we still don't have any touching. All the way over and back, still don't have any worries about it touching this wheel well, because if it does touch, it's gonna make a stupid sound and it'll just be irritating. Plus it'll be touching, it's not ideal. So they make the subframe so they move around so you can adjust for caster and uh, you know, and tow and stuff like that. Because if it's not centered, you'll have weird tow issues. And since the lower control arms aren't that adjustable on Dodges, it, uh, it, it's like the only way that you adjust for that stuff from the lower control arm standpoint. Once I make adjustable lower control arms, I won't have to really worry about it. What I'm gonna do in the beginning is just center the subframes and then plan on just adjusting for that stuff later on. All my other arms on this are gonna be all adjustable, so I don't have to worry about that. But let's get the last thing fixed on this, which is the parking brake cables. And they're supposed to go back this way. And uh, I think I'm gonna make them come up here because on the Chargers, Challengers, and Magnums, they're all on the front. So here's the front of the diff. It's right here, it's on this side of the axle. So the cable would be technically too short. So if I could make it so I don't have to like make another parking brake cable, that would be the best plan of action. So let's figure this out. It's the last thing I have to kind of figure out on this thing. So on one side, I put the lower control arm and the rear knuckle, which has the parking brake cable. So usually this parking brake cable comes out around here and then is right here. What I think I'm gonna do is have it on the inside, which will uh, hopefully locate it close enough to the other parking brake cable so I don't have to have a parking brake cable made or have to modify a parking brake cable, which the parking brake cable isn't that big of a deal, but I would like it to work. So this uh, is a good idea. I think I'm going to bolt the diff in here and then flip her over and then just pretty much put the cable exactly where it needs to go. So there's some marks right here and right here. I'm just gonna wrap those around to the other side so I know exactly where they're supposed to be and then we can get all this situated. And I don't remember what I did with the material. It's just pretty much an eyelet. So I'm going to grab some off of this other subframe outside which I'm not gonna use. I think this one's already cut up anyway. Yeah, so I've already cut this one up. I'm just gonna take these parking brake cable mounts right here, which are already kind of contoured for a tube almost, and just use those. I now have the subframe in for the final test fit. So the last thing that I wanted to make sure was gonna work was the parking brake cable. So I was gonna put it towards the diff and just route the cable that way, I put the diff in there, it would have worked, but this was just a lot simpler. Plus I have plenty of room. You can see I have, you know, probably like an inch and a half or so. So don't have to worry about it. The only thing I'm concerned about is I might end up having to make a parking brake cable, but I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to have to because the cables are gonna be on the top and then this cable is gonna come through here and that piece that's cut off over there is still probably about that long. So hopefully I don't have to make a cable. I'm not gonna have to worry about it interfering with the axles or any of the suspension or anything like that. And we'll just have a really nice clean install. So the, the rear subframe, 100% fabricated. We have the sway bar mounts, lower controller mounts, all the suspension mounts for the adjustable arms, diff mounting, exhaust mounting, parking brake mounting. She is finally ready to weld up. So I'm gonna end the video here just because I'm, it's gonna be a lot, a lot of welding. And uh, I'll do that in the next video, which will probably be this week as well. So before I end this video, I haven't done this on a charger video, but I entered for the Chief Donut Maker Contest. I'll put a link up here. Go check out my video. I'm not sure if the view count counts or matters, but check it out, give me a view. I'd appreciate it if you could. And then we'll just, you know, hopefully I could get that position 
and it would be awesome because then I get a sit down. Whoever wins gets a sit down with Dodge's engineers and talk to them. And I think I'd be the perfect person for that. So I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time. <laughs>